Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos and of course I take photos. I was out a couple of days ago, early morning, downtown, taking some shots, handheld, low light, higher ISO, therefore a little bit noisy. And what I wanted to do in this video is show my workflow using Topaz Denoise AI along with Luminar AI, two frankly fantastic products. But um, one of the reasons I wanted to do this is because Topaz just got an update to version 3.3.3, which includes a brand new raw processing model, which frankly works great. So let's get into it. Um, this is a raw file. You can see in the bottom left-hand side, it's 9172.arw, which is a Sony raw file format. I'm zoomed in 329%, and you can see here that this noise reduction is looking good. Uh, honestly, it's just taken... Um, all that grain and that yuckiness out of the photo and frankly looks awesome. And that's what's so good about this update to version 3.3.3. <laughs> that's going to be kind of a lot to say, but um, I think it's working really well. That raw model is just um, so far for me working really well. I'm happy with this update. I also feel like it's a little bit of a, a, a like a, you know, what do you call it? A shot across the bow over at DxO, whose Pure Raw product just got updated to version 1.5. And also, that's a great product. Um, but these guys at Topaz, I think mostly in the past, have been kind of like, oh, you use us as a plug-in um, from whatever app you use. It could be Luminar, it could be Lightroom, it could be whatever. Use us as a plug-in to do your noise reduction. But with this raw processing model, they're now saying, hey, do this raw processing noise reduction first on your noisy, noisy raw files, and then go into your app and edit. Um, and so it's a bit of a change for them, I think, but it's really good. Um, there are some other updates as well. The DNG output is now more color accurate. In the comparison view, you can include this raw file, like in the upper left, you can see that. Uh, some things like that. I'm gonna go back to split view. This is not a full tutorial of Topaz Denoise AI, but bottom line, new raw model, it's, it's working great, to be honest. I'm liking it quite a bit. Um, and with the uh, improvements to their DNG output, I'm gonna go ahead and click Save Image. Um, there it is, DNG, that's selected. You can see that they add the Denoise AI uh, uh, appended to the end of the file name. I'm gonna go ahead and click Save, and it's gonna take a second, save that, and then I'll pop into Luminar and show you how I edit. Okay, so here's my DNG, and here's my file folder of images. This is 9172, which is right there, as you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this into this folder, and it drops it in right next to it, and that's gonna make it easy for me to find. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that, and let me get Luminar up here, and Luminar, here we go. So here's 9172, and just to the next of it, to the right of it, is my DNG file that's been through Denoise. So now it's all set and ready to go, and I'm gonna do some editing to take advantage of that powerful denoising on my raw file, but now I've still got a DNG that I can go edit. So I'm gonna start here with Composition AI, and of course I'm gonna crop this thing because it's, uh, it's just way, uh, it's way too broad of a photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and do something about like that. Let's see, maybe a little bit more, uh, maybe a little bit higher like that. Get that guy a little bit more on the mark. Uh, something about like that. Let's just say, go ahead and, and go. Okay, and then if you saw this recent video, you know that I like to start my darker images with super contrast because it's so powerful and does such a great job of helping you uh, really manage that light. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I've got some mid-tones here. I'm gonna to go to like the mid-50s, so like maybe about 53. And the shadows, I'm going pretty high as well. I'm going to like 71, except I am gonna play with the balance a little bit. The balance here in the mid-tones is gonna be a negative 76, and I'm gonna do about a negative 19 or so on the balance for the shadows. So if I turn this off, there's the before. You can see quite a bit darker and now a little bit brighter, which I like. And as I talked about in that video, that's my first step on a dark photo. And then I go to Enhance AI and get Accent AI. And here I'm gonna to go to like 24, 25, something about like that, bringing up the, uh, the light in the photo. So those two moves, plus the crop, of course, uh, but those two moves took me from that photo to this one. And remember, I'm working off a DNG file and all the noise is gone. So I'm loving that. Uh, now that I've got that done, I'm gonna pop into light and I'm gonna go a little bit bluer. So like 2,900 and something, and maybe like just a tiny bit on the tint. I, don't, I just wanna be careful. There's already a little bit of magenta there. I don't wanna overdo that. Uh, a very small amount of smart contrast. And I actually lifted the highlights all the way to 100 because it's really uh, helping to pop that buy, sell, trade neon sign there. And I'm gonna lift the shadows just a little bit as well. 
not major moves, just little ones, but I wanted to get a little bit more light in the photo. And that's kind of what I'm finding myself doing is the super contrast and then accent AI and then back to light. Uh, here, I'm gonna do some structure AI. I'm gonna do something about like that. And as you notice, it also brightens the image a little bit. I'm gonna paint that in. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so something about like that is where my structure is going. So if I, I'm gonna turn that mask off, but if I turn it off uh, before, there it is, you can see it's a little bit darker, a little bit less crunchy, and after, a little bit more crunch. I like to do that to man-made stuff, especially concrete. I just think it looks good to have a little bit of crunch in it. And now that I've done that, I'm just gonna wrap it up with a vignette. It's gonna be a pretty simple edit here. Um, I'm gonna do about a negative 40, and the size is about a 25, and I'm gonna place the uh, subject over here on this gentleman who's out jogging, and I'm gonna give him some inner light to kind of brighten him up a little bit. And, you know, maybe something about like that. In fact, I think I'm going to scoot over a little bit more, maybe, maybe right in there. Um, and, and that's really it. So that's my final edit. But there it is zoomed in. You can see the noise is blissfully gone. And I just think that looks so good. So that's one of the nice things about the fact that Luminar has a kind of a browser based uh, library or catalog. And that is when you add a file to a folder that Luminar is watching, it'll show up there immediately and show in Luminar, which is kind of how I was demoing that. So once I saved my DNG from Topaz, dropped it in the same folder, it shows up right next to the original in Luminar. And then I can go edit that original and take care of it. So that's really it, my friends. That's a good combination of how I like to use Topaz Denoise AI along with Luminar AI to get the most out of my photos. Hope it helps and gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching, my friends. I will see you in the next video, which is coming really soon. So take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time and adios.